Hi and welcome to this clip going through some basic ideas on orbital hybridization and molecular orbital theory. Uh, like it says on the screen, uh, this is designed to move on a little bit from A level, uh, not massively so, not to go into too much detail, and as a result some of the ideas might be a bit simplified, but this will be for the reasons of clarity and accessibility. So the fundamental idea behind covalent bonding is that electrons are shared by the atoms when the atomic orbitals overlap. And it's also taught at A level that different atomic orbitals are situated in different energy levels. And this obviously links to the orbitals in subshells idea. Now we can also consider that atomic orbitals, and obviously just looking at P and S orbitals here, um, can overlap, but they need to be considered in terms of the fact that they're in three dimensions. So for example, in P orbitals, or in P subshells I should say, you get a PZ orbital, a PY orbital, and a PX orbital according to how it's positioned on a three-dimensional set of axes. So if we take um, two 1s atomic orbitals and we overlap them, for instance hydrogen for example, you can get one of two possible ways in which they could overlap. So in the bottom part of the picture, the orbitals are overlapping so the electrons are further apart. Whereas at the top, they're overlapping so the electrons are closer together. So in, a, um, in an antibonding orbital, this is a less energe energetically favourable arrangement. And in a bonding orbital, it's a more energetically favourable arrangement. And a node is the point in an orbital where there is zero electron density. So the nodes in each p orbital are now indicated by blue arrows. And uh, obviously the opposite of a node is a lobe. And the lobe is an area of, um, of maximum likely electron density. And the lobes are now indicated by red arrows. So if we now consider the A-level electron configuration for carbon, 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. So the answer comes from a, a concept called orbital hybridization. So what happens is electrons are promoted from S orbitals to P orbitals. For a relatively small injection of energy from the atom, you get a more stable um, arrangement of the electrons, where their situation in the energy level um, scale means they can line up more effectively. So looking at this a little bit more closely, this is what happens in alkanes to allow the atomic orbitals in carbon and hydrogen to line up in terms of their different energies. And this is called sp3 hybridization. It also leads to the familiar tetrahedral arrangement we find in alkanes. So in alkenes it's quite a similar process. Um, but what happens here is you have the p orbital in each carbon that sticks up and down. Um, if you think about the way that we draw a um, the overlap of orbitals in alkenes from A level, as we get the sideways overlap of the p orbitals, um, so there's also a p orbital that remains unhybridized and overlaps to form the pi bond. So just going back to the electron configuration for a carbon atom, you can see what part of the electrons in the carbon atom end up being hybridized and which ones don't. So to introduce molecular orbital theory, we need to come back to the idea of lobes and nodes. So an, an, a lobe is at highest the area in an orbital where you get the highest probability of finding electron density as opposed to a node where you get the lowest probability of finding electron density. So 
So in order for atomic orbitals to overlap effectively to form molecular orbitals, the lobes must line up as opposed to the nodes lining up. So you get a good overlap of the orbitals. In this way, the nuclei of the bonded atoms are more able to exert the attraction they need to to form an effective bond. And this attraction has to be for both of the bonded electrons, as the diagram shows. So if we draw an energy level diagram to illustrate this, each hydrogen atom contains an atomic orbital, 1s1. If the 1s1 orbitals overlap, they create a molecular orbital. However, molecular orbital theory states that the number of molecular orbitals formed after bonding must equal the number of atomic orbitals present before bonding. So we get anti-bonding orbitals as well as bonding orbitals. And for reasons of stability and energy, bond pairs usually enter bonding rather than anti-bonding orbitals. So looking at this slightly different way of representing the hydrogen molecule, in the bonding orbital, the lobes pull that more fully, so this arrangement is better, it's more favourable, it's less ener more energetically stable. In the anti-bonding orbital, the nodes are closer together, so effective overlap is less likely. So let's now have a look at uh, methane using the same molecular orbital theory. Just a little diagram there to recap on the hybridization we talked about, except this time I've drawn it to show the uh, the four uh, molecular orbitals sticking out at 109.5 degrees to each other. So I start off by drawing the hybridized arrangement for carbon, remembering that we had sp3 hybrid orbitals. So we've got four electrons in the outer shell, they're ready to go. I draw my four hydrogen atoms lined up. The way I'm doing the diagram it's so I can show effectively the overlap of the um, of the orbitals so it might seem strange initially that we've got um, 1s and 2p and 2s roughly in the same energy level. I've put the energy level um, scale in to show the difference in energy between 2s and 2p. So the 1s from each um, hydrogen is now lined up ready to overlap between the hybridized um, 2ps, sorry, 2sp orbitals in itself. So I add my um, bonding in my anti-bonding orbital to show the overlap between 2s and 1s. So I've got four sp3 hybrid orbitals um, and the only, bond, only the bonding orbitals are filled and the anti-bonding orbitals are left empty. So let's look at one or two other examples before we wrap things up. So let's have a look at ammonia this time round. We also get hybridization taking place in ammonia. And you can see where the lone pair comes from. So I'm applying the hybridization idea across to a new molecule that we haven't looked at in this form before. So I start off by hybridizing my nitrogen atomic orbital, making it ready. I line up my three hydrogen atoms. So we've got our unoccupied anti-bonding orbitals. We've got the lone pair in the nitrogen and three sp3 hybridized bond pairs. Now there's obviously lots of other examples we could look at um, and I, I did say at the beginning I want to try and keep it fairly simple so hopefully that's uh, a useful introductory look at molecular orbital theory and hybridization for now. It's really intended for people who are uh, coming to the end of an A-level course and maybe looking on to do chemistry at university rather than a full-on video for university level. So hopefully it's been useful. Um, thanks for listening and until next time, see you soon.